Thomas and the pigs. There are lots and lots of farms on the island of Sodor. There are farms with sheep. There are farms with cows. There are farms with goats. Thomas likes visiting all the farms. But his favorite farm of all was Farmer Trotter's pig farm. Thomas liked their curly tails and the funny noises they made. Thomas liked to visit Farmer Trotter's pig farm as often as he could. One day, Thomas was watching the pigs roll in the mud. Farmer Trotter was happy to see Thomas. Hello, Farmer Trotter. Hello, Thomas. I have some very special news. One of my pigs is going to have piglets today. Thomas was excited. I can't wait to see them. I need some soft straw for the piglets. I'd like you to go to Farmer McCall's right now to collect it. He'll be waiting for you. Thomas was happy to help. Yes, Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away with his empty flatbed. On his way to Farmer McCall's, Thomas thought about the pigs. I'm sure the piglets will like the soft straw. I wonder if there's anything else they'd like. Thomas puffed up to the dairy. He saw Percy. Thomas told Percy all about the piglets. How exciting! I wish I could see them, but I have to deliver this milk. Thomas looked at the milk churns. An idea flew into his funnel. I'm sure the piglets would like some milk. May I have some? Of course you can, Thomas. So the milk churns were loaded onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you, Percy. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And he steamed away. Thomas felt pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then, Thomas saw James. James was at an orchard. The trees were full of juicy red apples. Hello, James. Hello, Thomas. Thomas told James all about the piglets. The piglets will soon be born. I must collect some soft straw for them. I wish I could see the piglets, but I have to deliver these boxes of apples to the village. Thomas looked at the juicy red apples. I'm sure the piglets would like some juicy red apples. May I have some? Of course you can. So Thomas's flatbed was loaded with lots and lots of juicy red apples. Thank you, James. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. Thomas chuffed quickly away. He felt very pleased. I wonder what else the piglets might like. Then Thomas saw some children. They were collecting shiny brown chestnuts. Hello. Thomas told the children all about the piglets. They were very excited. <laughs> I'm sure the piglets would like some shiny brown chestnuts to eat. Please, may I have some for them? The children were delighted to give Thomas some of their shiny brown chestnuts. Thank you. I must go. Farmer McCall is waiting for me. And Thomas puffed away. He felt even more pleased. At last, Thomas chuffed to Farmer McCall's farm. Farmer McCall was waiting. He was cross. Thomas, you're late. Where have you been? I'm sorry, Farmer McCall. I stopped to collect some milk, some juicy red apples and some shiny brown chestnuts for the piglets. Farmer McCall looked at Thomas's flatbed. He saw the milk, 
the juicy red apples and shiny brown chestnuts. Your flatbed is full. You have no room for straw now. Fizzling fireboxes. I didn't think about that. I hope the piglets will like the milk, the apples and the chestnuts just as much as straw. I must puff straight back to Farmer Trotters. The piglets will be born soon. So Thomas pumped his pistons and chuffed quickly away. Thomas pulled up at the farm. Farmer Trotter was waiting. He looked at Thomas's full flatbed. He was surprised. Thomas, where's the soft straw? I thought the piglets would like these things just as much as straw. No, Thomas. Piglets need soft straw and they're about to be born. Thomas felt very silly. I'm sorry. I'll empty my flatbed, then I'll puff back to Farmer McColl's as fast as I can. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. The piglets will need it by the end of the day. Thomas saw Percy at the water tower. Thomas, I know something else the piglets would like. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop. Bye, Thomas. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Next, Thomas saw James at a junction. Hello, Thomas. I've been thinking about the piglets. I'm sure they'd like... I'm sorry, James. I can't stop. I must get the straw. There can be no delay. I've no time for chatter along the way. Thomas whooshed and he wheeshed. He huffed and he puffed until he arrived at Farmer McColl's farm. It was late. Hello, Farmer McColl. Now I have plenty of room for the soft straw for the piglets. Could you load it right now? Of course I can, Thomas. <laughs> Thank you, Farmer McColl. I must hurry. Thomas's pistons pumped and his axles ached. I must puff fast. There's no time for delay. The piglets need straw by the end of the day. At last, Thomas arrived at Farmer Trotter's pig farm. It was now nearly night time. Thomas saw that the pigs had gone. Cinders and ashes. I'm too late. You're just in time, Thomas. I need that soft straw right away. Farmer Trotter unloaded the straw from Thomas's flatbed and he took it away to make a nice soft bed for the piglets. The piglets have just been born. Thomas was delighted. Bubbling boilers. Look how small they are and how sweet. Thomas could see the piglets really like the soft straw. Ah, oh, that little piglet is looking at me. I think I'll call him Thomas. Thomas was so happy, his axles tingled and his boiler bubbled. <coughs> Percy's parcel. It was a beautiful day on the island of Sodor. The sun was shining in a bright blue sky. And all the engines were very excited. There was to be a special party. It was Dowager Hat's birthday. The Fat Controller arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had a special for Thomas. Thomas, you are to collect passengers for the party from Brendam Docks. Thomas was excited. Yes, sir. Percy hoped that the Fat Controller had a special for him. But he didn't. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure you'll have a special later. But Percy still felt sad. Mavis rolled by and stopped. She could see Percy was unhappy. What's wrong, Percy? I don't have a special. Everybody else does. Don't worry, Percy. I'm sure the Fat Controller will come back with a special special just for you. And when he does, be sure to tell me all about it. Just then, the Fat Controller did come back. 
Percy was surprised. Percy, you have the most important special of all. You must collect my mother's special birthday parcel from Brendan Docks. Then you must deliver it to the birthday party at Knapford Station. Percy beamed from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Percy was excited. Mavis had been right. Percy puffed into Brendan Docks. He gasped. The parcel was the most special parcel he had ever seen. Percy was so proud, his firebox fizzed. I must show Mavis straight away. She'll be very proud of me. Thomas was at Brendan. He was pleased for his friend. Percy, you have the most important special of all. I know. I'm going to show Mavis my special special straight away. But don't you have to go to Knapford Station? Percy didn't want to listen to Thomas. I have plenty of time to puff to Knapford. First, I will show Mavis my special special. So Percy set off for the quarry as quickly as he could puff. Percy steamed into the quarry. He looked for Mavis. Mavis was busy. Rocky was loading heavy crates onto trucks. And Mavis was shunting them. It was hard work. Hello, Mavis. Hello, Percy. Look at my special special. I'm sorry, Percy. I can't stop now. I'm too busy. Don't worry, Mavis. I'll wait. Look out, Percy! But it was too late. Whoa! Rocky dropped his heavy load of slate. Everyone was lost in a thick black cloud of slate dust. At last, the dust cleared. Mavis, Rocky and Percy were covered in thick grey dust. And so was Percy's special special. Percy was upset. Bubbling boilers! Look at the birthday parcel. What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. At last, an idea flew into his funnel. <gasps> I'll go to the washdown. My special special will be cleaned there as good as new. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to Rocky. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I still have plenty of time. So Percy steamed quickly away. Percy huffed and puffed to the washdown. James was already there having a polish. My, my, Percy, whatever happened to you? Percy felt very silly. I'd like a very good wash, please. The workman got straight to work. Water and soapy bubbles sprayed everywhere. Soon Percy was gleaming green again, but his special special looked terrible. Bubbling boilers! The birthday parcel is wetter than wet! What am I going to do? Percy thought as quickly as he could. At last, another idea flew into his funnel. <gasps> I'll take my special special to the Sodor Steamworks. Victor will help me. His hot air blowers will dry the birthday parcel. Percy, shouldn't you go straight to the party at Knapford? Percy didn't want to listen to James. I'll go to Knapford Station as soon as I've shown Mavis my special special. I'm sure I still have plenty of time. And Percy chuffed quickly away. Percy raced like the wind to the steamworks. Percy looked for Victor at the steamworks. He couldn't find him anywhere. But he did find a workman. I'd like to be dried as quickly as you can, please. The workman was happy to help. Hot air whooshed and whirred all over Percy and all over his special special. Soon the workman had finished. Percy felt very pleased until he saw the birthday parcel. Wobbling wheels. It's all crinkled and crumpled. What am I going to do? Percy thought as hard as he could. But this time, no ideas flew into his funnel at all. So Percy steamed sadly away. Percy clickety-clacked slowly along the track. Now he didn't want to show Mavis his special special. He had spoiled Dowager Hat's birthday parcel. 
He couldn't go to the party at Knapford now. Percy didn't want anyone to see him, so he chuffed into a siding to hide. He felt terrible. Then he heard Mavis and Edward chuff to the junction. Hello, Mavis. You look happy. I am. I've just picked up these brand new crates. Suddenly, Percy stopped feeling sad and he started to listen very carefully. Brand new crates? Victor had just delivered them to the steamworks. I've never pulled brand new crates before. Goodbye, Edward. A brand new crate is just what I need. Percy pumped his pistons and puffed away to the steamworks. Hello, Victor. Hello, my friend. How can I help you? I've just seen Mavis with brand new crates. May I have one, please? Well, what for? To put my birthday parcel in. Well, of course you can, Percy. That made Percy very happy. Thank you, Victor. Soon, a new bright red crate was sitting on Percy's flatbed. This will be the grandest parcel the Fat Controller's mother has ever been given. I must hurry now. Everyone will be waiting. Thank you, Victor. And Percy puffed proudly out of the steamworks. The Fat Controller and Dowager Hat were waiting at Knapford Station. The Fat Controller was cross. Then Percy puffed in. The brand new bright red birthday parcel looked wonderful. Everyone cheered. Happy birthday, Mom. Here's your very special birthday present. Dowager Hat beamed and even the Fat Controller smiled. As the workman opened the crate, everyone wanted to see what the present was. Dowager Hat was most excited of all. Then everyone gasped. It was a beautiful portrait of Dowager Hat. Oh my, Bertram! What a wonderful surprise! I'm very happy! <laughs> That's the most special special I've ever seen, Percy. Percy smiled from footplate to fender. He was sure he was the happiest engine of all. A blooming mess. It was a special day on the island of Sodor. Knapford Station was going to be decorated. All the engines were very busy and very excited. The Fat Controller was at Tidmouth Sheds. Knapford Station is being decorated. There are lots of jobs to do. Thomas, you must go to the quarry and collect slate for the new roof. Yes, sir. Emily, you must go to Maithwaite Station and collect the flowers for the new window boxes. Flowers? How lovely! I know all about flowers. I know that buttercups are yellow. Emily! And then take them to Knapford Station. Yes, sir. Emily huffed happily to Maithwaite Station. She passed Toby. Toby was delivering wood for Knapford's new floors. Hello, Toby. Hello, Emily. Then, Emily passed James. James was delivering pots of paint to paint Knapford's new walls. Hello, James. Good morning, Emily. Emily puffed up to a junction. Mavis was on the bridge above. Hello, Mavis. But Mavis didn't say hello to Emily. Emily was surprised. Mavis? Mavis! Hello? Mavis still didn't say hello to Emily. Emily wondered what was wrong with Mavis. I know what's wrong. Mavis must be feeling sad today. 
At Maithwaite Station, Emily buffered up to the flatbed of flowers. There are a lot of different flowers here, Emily. Emily knew the names of all the flowers, but she didn't say a word. She was thinking about Mavis. She wanted to make Mavis happy. Then an idea flew into her funnel. I'm sure flowers would make Mavis happy. I have lots of them. I can leave some of them at the quarry for Mavis. So Emily didn't puff straight to Nafford Station with the flowers. She took the track to the quarry instead. Emily huffed happily into the quarry. She couldn't see Mavis anywhere. I know. I'll decorate the quarry with flowers. That will make Mavis very happy when she comes back. Emily looked for a place to put some flowers. This is the perfect place. Mavis will see the flowers here as soon as she arrives. Emily felt very pleased with herself. Now, hmm, I must find somewhere else to put some more flowers. Emily looked around. She didn't see Edward puff into the quarry behind her. But she did hear the loud crash. Fizzling fireboxes. What was that? Edward had crashed straight into the flatbed of flowers and rolled towards the hopper. Edward, look out! Those flowers are going to make Mavis happy. Pardon? Edward was confused. I'm sure flowers by the hopper would make Mavis happy. The hopper's so grey and dusty. Emily felt even more pleased with herself. Now, I must find somewhere else to put some more flowers. Emily looked around. She didn't see Thomas reverse towards the hopper behind her, but she did hear the loud crash. Bubbling boilers! What was that? Cinders and ashes! Bust my buffers! Watch out for the flowers! They're going to make Mavis happy! At that moment, Mavis pulled into the quarry. Whatever has happened? Emily looked at Mavis. Mavis wasn't happy. She was very upset. What has happened to my quarry? And what are those flowers doing here? Emily gasped. The flowers haven't made Mavis happy. The quarry is in a terrible mess. And it's all my fault. Emily chuffed up to Mavis. You didn't say hello today, so I thought you were sad. I brought the flowers because I wanted to make you happy. Mavis sighed. I wasn't sad. I didn't say hello because I was thinking about all the jobs I had to do today. Emily felt very silly. I wish I had asked if you were sad. Then I wouldn't have brought the flowers and the quarry wouldn't be in a terrible mess. Mavis looked at the mess. She looked very sad. Emily wanted to think of a way to make Mavis happy. And now she knew she had to ask. Mavis, what would make you happy? I would like the quarry to be tidy and all the engines to be really useful. Emily felt very pleased she had asked Mavis. Now she knew exactly what to do to make Mavis happy. I can't move. I'm covered in sleigh dust and my firebox has gone out. Don't worry, Thomas. I'll shunt you over to the coal hopper. You'll soon be burning brightly again. Thank you, Emily. So Emily worked hard. She puffed and she huffed and she heaved Thomas to the coal hopper. Then she biffed and she bashed the flower beds away from the hopper so that Edward could shunt his truck to be filled. Now, 
The quarry is tidy again, and all the engines are being really useful. Is there anything else that would make you happy? Yes. I want you to deliver the flowers to Natford Station, where they should be. Right away, Mavis. At last, Emily arrived at Natford Station. Here are the flowers for the new flower boxes. Thank you, Emily. Emily watched as the flowers were unloaded. They looked very pretty. Did you know, Thomas, that those yellow flowers are called buttercups? And those red ones, Edward, are called roses? And those white ones are daisies? Mavis puffed up. She was smiling. My! You're smiling, Mavis. Are you happy? I am. Those flowers look wonderful. And that made Emily happy too. Steamy Sodor. All the engines on Sodor like to be really useful. They huff and they puff to do their best for the Fat Controller's Railway. And sometimes that means doing a job they have never done before. One morning, the Fat Controller had a new job for Thomas. Victor has to go to the transfer yards. He has to see one of the little engines. He'll be away all day. You must look after the steamworks, Thomas. Victor will tell you all you need to know. Make sure you listen carefully. Yes, sir. Thomas was excited. The Sodor Steamworks is one of my favourite places on the island. Today, I'm going to be in charge. That's a very important job, Thomas. Good luck. Thank you, Percy. And Thomas puffed proudly away to the Steamworks. And his new job. Victor was waiting for Thomas at the Steamworks. Thomas was very excited. His boiler bubbled and his firebox fizzed. Hello, my friend. This is a big day for you. The Steamworks will be very busy. Not too busy for me, Victor. I like being busy. <laughs> That's good, my friend. Now, when an engine comes in, you have to listen carefully to the problem. If you need help, ask Kevin. That's right, Thomas. When you're in a fix, look no further. Just ask Kevin. It will save you bother. <laughs> Thank you, Kevin. Are you listening, Thomas? Yes, Victor. But Thomas was too excited to listen. He wanted to get on with his very important job. Don't worry, Victor. I know just what to do. Hurry, Victor. You'll be late for the little engines. Very well, my friend. Good luck. And Victor steamed away. Thomas was now in charge. Soon, Spencer steamed sulkily into the steamworks. His shiny silver paintwork was scratched and scuffed. Spencer was surprised to see Thomas. Huh, where's Victor? He's away today. I'm in charge. Spencer was worried. Oh, my, Spencer. You are in a mess. I'll check you over from wheels to whistle. Put Spencer up on the hoist, please, Kevin. Kevin was worried. Are you sure, boss? I mean, Thomas, I don't think Spencer needs to go on the hoist. I mean, he needs a repaint, boss. But Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. He was too excited. He was in charge of the steamworks. Put Spencer up on the hoist, Kevin. Over here, Spencer. Uh, please, if you don't mind. Please, uh, thank you. So Spencer huffed huffily to the hoist. Then, Henry chuffed in. Henry wasn't well. He spluttered and stuttered. He wheezed and sneezed. Henry was surprised to see Thomas. What are you doing here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Henry <laughs> sighed. Then he wheezed. <laughs> then he sneezed. Footplates and fenders. I know just what's wrong with you, Henry. You have been given the wrong coal. Henry gasped. No, Thomas, it's not my... <coughs> but Thomas wasn't listening. 
Don't worry, Henry. We'll have you puffing proudly in no time. Kevin, bring over some of Henry's special coal, please. But, but what about Spencer, boss? But Thomas wasn't listening. Quick as you can, Kevin. So Kevin trundled to the coal. Spencer sat sniffily by the hoist. Henry spluttered and stuttered, and Thomas felt pleased and proud. I like being in charge of the steamworks. Then James steamed snootily in. Straw and twigs blocked his funnel. Why are you here, Thomas? Victor is away today. I'm in charge. Bubbling boilers, you are in a mess. What happened to you? I can't puff properly. <laughs> I know just what you need. Kevin? Yes, boss. I mean, Thomas. James needs a new funnel. No, I don't. But Thomas wasn't listening to James. But what about Henry's coal? And Spencer on the hoist? Thomas wasn't listening to Kevin. Find the spare funnel, please. Kevin was now very confused. To find the funnel, he had to put down Henry's coal. But first, he had to raise Spencer on the hoist. It was all too much for Kevin. Oh, dear, boss! Uh, Thomas! Don't worry, Kevin. I'm in charge. Then there was trouble. Kevin reeled and rolled back towards the hoist. And with a biff and a bash, he hit a big green button. That made Spencer shudder into the air. Trembling tracks, what's happening? Kevin gasped. <gasps> Even hooks! Sorry, Spencer! Then Kevin dropped Henry's coat right in front of Henry's nose. Bust my boiler and crushing coals! Kevin rocked and rolled into James. Ah! Mind my shiny red paintwork! James was so upset he blew the biggest puff of steam he had ever blown. All over Victor. Victor had just arrived from the transfer yards. Now he was covered from buffer to buffer in twig, soot and straw. Victor's wheels wobbled and his steam stuttered. <gasps> Sizzling sodor! What has happened to my beautiful steamworks? Thomas looked at Victor. And then at the mess and the muddle. Cinders and ashes. This is all my fault. No, boss. I mean, Thomas, I'm sure it's my fault. I'm sorry, boss. I did try to say, boss. No, Kevin. It's not your fault. I didn't listen to Victor. I didn't listen to you. And I didn't listen to my friends. I was too excited and too silly. I think, my friend, you are right. What will you do now? I'm sorry to all of you. Now I'll listen to you, and I'll make sure you're all fixed properly. So Victor and Thomas went first to Spencer. I don't need checking from wheels to whistle. I need new paint for my scuffs and scratches. This time Thomas listened. Don't worry, Spencer. You'll be sparkling silver in no time. That made Spencer very happy. Next, Victor and Thomas talked to Henry. I have my special coal, but there's something wrong with my firebox. It makes me <coughs> wheeze and sneeze. Don't worry, Henry. Your firebox will be cleaned. You won't wheeze and sneeze anymore. And Thomas was right. Pumping pistons. No more wheezes and sneezes. That's much better. Lastly, Victor and Thomas listened to James. I don't need a new funnel. I need my old funnel cleaned and polished. James, you will have the most perfectly polished funnel on Sodor. Ah. <sighs> James's funnel was shining like the sun. James smiled from fender to footplate. Soon, all the engines were fixed. They were ready to be really useful again. Well done, my friend. Time to go home. Not quite, Victor. It's time to say thank you to Kevin. Any time, boss. I mean, Thomas. <laughs> and everyone laughed and laughed and laughed. <laughs> 
the biggest present of all. For all the engines on the island of Sodor, there are jobs to be done, visitors to meet, and friends to greet. One day, there was a very special friend to greet. Hero was coming back to Sodor. He was to help with the summer visitors. Thomas and Percy waited for him at Brendam Docks. I'm so excited, my firebox is fizzing. And my boiler is bubbling. Hero, our special friend, is coming back to Sodor. Hello, my good friends. I have missed you. We missed you too, Hero. The three engines tooted and hooted with happiness. Welcome back, Hero. First, you must go to the steamworks. Victor will check your engine after your long journey. Of course, sir. Every day, I want to be a really useful engine. Then, you must go to Knapford Station. I will meet you there. Yes, sir. Of course, sir. Hero puffed proudly away. I want there to be a welcome party for Hero at Knapford. Percy, you must collect Lady Hat and bring her to the party. Thomas, you must tell the engines to chuff quickly to Knapford for the party. Then the Fat Controller left. Thomas and Percy were excited. Oh my! A welcome party will make Hero very happy. A welcome present would make Hero even happier. That's a good idea. I must go now, Thomas. Lady Hat will be waiting. Then Thomas steamed slowly away. I'm sure I'll find something special for Hero. I'll look as I puff around the island, telling my friends about the party. Thomas clickety-clacked along the track. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then an idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at Farmer McColl's farm. So Thomas pumped his pistons and raced to Farmer McColl's farm. Emily was there. She was collecting straw. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's exciting. Good luck, Thomas. Emily puffed away. Thomas didn't tell her about the party at Knapford. He was too busy looking for a welcome present. Thomas saw the big brown barn. Perhaps Hero would like a barn. He could keep special things safe in a barn. But the barn is too big. And Thomas steamed slowly away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then another idea flew into Thomas's funnel. I'm sure there'll be something special at the quarry. So Thomas huffed happily to the quarry. Mavis, James, Toby and Henry were there. They were busy shunting slate trucks. Hero has come back. I'm finding a welcome present for him. That's a wonderful idea, Thomas. Henry, James and Toby chuffed away to shun trucks. Thomas didn't tell them about the party at Knapford. Thomas looked all around the quarry, but all he could see was Sodor Slate. Slate is very special to Sodor, but... Slate is too small to be a present. I must look for something else. So Thomas chuffed away. Something special from Sodor for my new friend. I'll search the whole island from end to end. Then Thomas gasped. The steamworks. I'm sure there'll be something special there. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully to the steamworks. Hello, Kevin. I'm looking for a welcome present for Hero. It has to be something special. Thomas saw an old bell. I'm sure Hero would like a bell. 
Then everyone would hear him coming. Good idea, Thomas. Good idea. But when Kevin picked up the bell, it clanged and clanked. It rang and rattled. Trembling tracks. That's too noisy. Hero will soon be at Napford to see the fat controller. Bust my buffers. I must hurry. Thomas raced out of the steamworks. He didn't tell Victor and Kevin about the party either. Thomas raced into Knapford Station. Hero was waiting, all alone. Thomas gasped. Cinders and ashes. I haven't found a welcome present for Hero. And I haven't told anyone about the party. This won't make Hero happy. Thomas felt terrible. Then his boiler bubbled and his wheels whirred. Hello, Hero. Goodbye, Hero. And Thomas steamed swiftly out of the station. Thomas puffed to Farmer McCall's. Emily, chuff as fast as you can to Knapford. The Fat Controller is having a welcome party for Hero. Tell everyone you pass. Thomas, I've had a marvellous idea for a special present for Hero. I'm sure he would like a bright, shiny dome. Victor must have one. Thomas was stern. Thank you, Emily. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas chuffed quickly away. Mavis, Toby, James and Henry were still at the quarry. You must all chuff to Knapford as fast as you can for Hero's welcome party. Thomas, I think I know exactly what Hero would like as a special present. A new glowing lamp. That would be very special. Thomas was firm. Thank you, Henry. Now is not the time to find presents. You must hurry. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Kevin, please tell all the engines to race to Knapford for Hero's party. My friend, Kevin and I have been thinking, what about a new shiny buffer for Hero? I think Hero would find that very special. Don't you think so, boss? Uh, Thomas? Thomas knew what he thought. I think now is not the time to find presents. Thank you, but you must tell the engines to hurry, please. And Thomas pumped his pistons and puffed away. Thomas clickety-clack down the track this way and that, telling his friends all about the party. Thomas puffed into Knapford Station. His face was red and his firebox glowed. Thomas, where have you been? Hero's welcome party is almost over. I'm sorry, sir. I was trying to find your welcome present, Hero. Something special from Sodor. But I couldn't find anything. I'm sorry. Hero smiled. Thomas, my friend, you must not worry. My welcome present is right here. Being with my friends is the biggest present of all. And the most special present from Sodo. There is nothing more special. Then Thomas smiled and smiled. He knew Hero was right, and so did all his friends. Henry's Good Deeds There are lots of beautiful birds on the island of Sodor. The engines know their names and their songs. One day, the engines were especially excited. A new bird had been seen on the island. The fat controller arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. He had important news. The Sodor Warbler has arrived back on the island. Very few people have ever seen this bird, so a lot of visitors will be coming to our island. You will all be very busy taking them to spot the bird. Remember your carriages at all times. And remember not to frighten the warbler. Henry was worried for the warbler. Do you think the Sodor warbler will be scared of engines? No, Henry. Not if you're really useful. And I need you to be really useful. Yes, sir. You must deliver a nesting pole to Bluff's Cove. Percy was puzzled. Um, what's a nesting pole? 
It's a tall pole with a shelf on top. Birds build their nests on it. Percy liked this idea. Do you understand, Henry? Yes, sir. I will deliver the pole straight away. Good. We hope the Sodor Warbler will make its home here once more. That's a very exciting special, Henry. Henry was happy. He puffed away proudly. Later, Henry clickety-clacked along the track. Ahead, he could see Thomas with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas had stopped. That's strange. Henry chuffed slowly up to Thomas. Is anything wrong, Thomas? No, Henry. I'm letting Farmer McCole cross with his sheep. Henry could see the sheep tripping and tapping across the tracks. Thomas, you helped me. That's a good deed. Well done. You're welcome, Farmer McCole. Thomas chuffed away cheerfully. Henry puffed and puzzled. I would like to help someone. They will call it a good deed and they will say, Well done, Henry. This made Henry feel very happy. I'm sure I can deliver the nesting pole and do good deeds. So Henry huffed happily on. Soon, Henry saw Farmer Trotter's pink pigs. They were snuffling and sniffing sadly at the side of the track. Hmm. Those pigs don't look very happy. Then, Henry saw that the pigs were looking at the muddy field on the other side of the tracks. I know what's wrong. Those pigs want to roll in the muddy field. If I stop here, those pigs can cross safely. They won't be scared anymore. So Henry stopped and the pigs tripped and trotted across the tracks. Soon, the pigs weren't pink anymore. They were brown, muddy and very happy. Farmer Trotter wasn't happy at all. I wanted pink pigs to take to the county fair. Henry was sorry. Oh dear, Farmer Trotter is cross. I didn't help at all. Suddenly, an idea flew into Henry's funnel. I'll reverse back down the track. Then the pigs will have more room to cross. Henry pumped his pistons, his wheels whirred, he puffed steam and he chuffed backwards. This should help, Farmer Trotter. But it didn't help. The pigs were scared by Henry's steam and the wear of his wheels. They scattered and clattered into the apple crates. The apples rolled everywhere. This made the pigs very happy. They munched and scrunched the rosy red apples. But now they wouldn't move from the tracks. That made Farmer Trotter even more cross. Bust my buffers. My idea wasn't a good deed at all. Just then, Thomas puffed up on the down line. Annie and Clarabelle were full of visitors to see the Sodor Warbler. Cinders and ashes! How am I going to puff through? The Sodor Warbler has been spotted in the Fenland fields. I'm in a hurry. I'm sorry, Thomas. I was trying to help Farmer Trotter. I'm sure I can help you. I'll take your visitors to the Fenland fields. We'll be there in good time. Thomas thought this was a good idea. Thank you, Henry. The visitors were surprised. They stepped and scurried through the pigs to Henry's carriage. Henry felt pleased. I'm sure this is a good deed, and I'm sure I still have time to deliver the nesting pole. Henry puffed and huffed his hardest all the way to the Fenland fields. Here we are. Watch out for the warbler. The visitors were very excited. They opened the carriage doors carefully. They didn't want to scare the Sodor Warbler away. Henry felt very happy. At last, I've been helpful. I've done a good deed. Henry tooted a loud goodbye. Then there was trouble. A colourful bird flapped and flew from a tree high into the sky and away. It was the Sodor Warbler. The visitors moaned and groaned. 
fizzling fireboxes. The bird was scared of my loud whistle. Henry steamed sadly away. I wanted to help the pigs. I wanted to help Farmer Trotter. I wanted to help the visitors. But I haven't helped anybody. I've done no good deeds. And I haven't delivered the nesting pole. Henry felt terrible. Henry huffed towards Bluff's Cove. He had to deliver the nesting pole. I don't think anyone is ever going to say, well done, Henry, to me. Henry waited at a junction. His wheels wobbled with worry. Now I'm sure I'll be late with the nesting pole. The fat controller will be cross with me. Oh dear, oh dear. Suddenly, a colourful bird flew from a tree. Henry was too sad to smile at the bird. The bird landed on Henry's buffer. At least I can give that bird a rest and a ride. So Henry and the beautiful bird chuffed on towards Bluff's Cove. Henry puffed to the halt. A lot of visitors were waiting. They were hoping to see the Sodor Warbler. I hope they'll be pleased that I have delivered the nesting pole. But the visitors weren't just pleased. They were amazed. They smiled and pointed and took out their cameras. Henry was surprised. Oh, the visitors seem very pleased to see me. I can't think why. After all, no one has said, well done, Henry. Well done, Henry. You have brought the soda warbler to us. Hooray for Henry! Henry blinked and blushed. The bird I carried on my buffer was the Sodor Warbler. Then Thomas arrived with more visitors. Well done, Henry. Henry was so proud, his firebox fizzed and his boiler bubbled. And this time I wasn't even trying to do a good deed. Soon the nesting pole was up. The Sodor Warbler looked snug and sleepy in its nest at the top. I think our friend likes its new home. Welcome home, Mr. Warbler. And well done, Henry. Hero helps out. The engines on the island of Sodor like to be busy. They heave and haul. They huff and puff. And most of all, they like to please the fat controller. One morning, Hero chuffed into Napford Station. There was hustle and bustle, noise and steam. It was another busy day at Napford. Then, the fat controller hurried onto the platform without his hat. Hero gasped. <gasps> Sir, good morning, sir. I hope the day finds you well, sir. The day finds me with much too much to do, hero. That's how the day finds me. I can see, sir. What are you staring at, hero? Nothing, sir. Just your hat, sir. Excuse me. Edward puffed in. Hello, Hero. You look worried. Not at all. Then there was trouble. Blistering boilers. In all my long years, I've never seen that before. <coughs> Hero was worried for the fat controller. Sir, can I help you, sir? It's a very busy day, Hero. I have to visit the Thin Controller. I must talk with him about the railways. Hero knew this was important. I understand, sir. I must be away from Knapford. Of course, sir. Now Edward was worried. Sir? Not now, Edward. Edward was still worried. I have to pick up visitors from Brendam Docks. I don't know where to take them. 
Hero didn't know where the visitors should go either, but he didn't want to bother the fat controller. Then, an idea flew into his funnel. Take them to the hills, Edward. They will enjoy the hills. So Edward puffed away to Brendam Docks and the hills. Hero felt happy. He was master of the railway as he liked to be. Hero puffed up to the water tower. Thomas was there. He was taking on water. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. Where are you going, Thomas? To Knapford. I must ask the fat controller where to take these crates of benches and tables. Hero still didn't want to bother the fat controller. The fat controller is busy now, Thomas. He will tell you where to go later. You have time to visit your friend. Farmer Trotter. So Thomas chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hero was happy. He was helping the Fat Controller. Hero steamed up to a junction. Percy was there. He had a flatbed full of quacking ducks. Hello, Percy. How are you? Percy was worried. Hello, Hero. These ducks are very noisy. They want to go swimming. I have to find the fat controller. He will tell me where I must take them for a swim. Hero still didn't want to bother the fat controller. The fat controller is very busy, Percy. Perhaps you could puff to the Finland. The ducks will be happy there. Thank you, Hero. Hero was happy. Helping the Fat Controller was the best job he had ever had. Hero huffed happily to a crossing. The Fat Controller was there. Hero, while I was with the Thin Controller, I heard worrying news. Farmer McCall is waiting for his ducks. There are no tables or benches for the concert at tea time. And Edward is late for a concert at the town hall. <gasps> Hero gasped. The fat controller was cross. The fat controller was cross with him. And it was all his fault. Hero felt worse than ever. He had been master of the railway. And now he was master of the muddle. I'm sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, sir. I knew you were very busy. I wanted to help, so I told the engines what to do. I didn't want to bother you, sir. <gasps> the fat controller gasped. You didn't want to bother me? I am controller of the railway. Nothing is more important to me than my engines being really useful. Hero gulped. I know that now, sir. I'm not master of the railway. I'm master of the muddle. I can put this right. Please give me time. And Hero wished quickly away. Hero found Edward in the hills. Hello, Hero. My visitors are very happy. Good, Edward. But now, you must take the visitors to Knapford Station. The fat controller will give you your orders. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller, Hero. I was wrong, Edward. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. And Hero steamed swiftly away. Hero whooshed up to Farmer Trotter's farm. Hello, Thomas. Hello, Hero. I'm having a wonderful time with the piglets. Good, Thomas, my friend. But now... You must puff as fast as you can to Knapford. The Fat Controller is waiting with orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller, Hero. I was wrong, Thomas. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. Bye, Hero! Hero clickety-clacked onto the Fenland track. Percy was there. The ducks were swimming happily. Hello, Percy. Hello, Hero. The ducks are very happy. 
I'm pleased to hear that, Percy. But now, you must take the ducks to Knupfoot. The Fat Controller has orders for you. I thought we weren't to bother the Fat Controller. I was wrong, Percy. The Fat Controller didn't want that at all. But how can I get the ducks back into their crate? I will help you, Percy. Hero blew his whistle. It sounded like a duck quacking. The ducks flapped and flew into their crates. Thank you, Hero. Later, the Fat Controller had given his orders to the engines. Now, you all know what you have to do. Chuff away and be really useful. Hero puffed forward. And what shall I do, sir? You, Hero, will do what you have always done. You will be helpful, Hero. Helping me. And nothing could have made Hero happier. <laughs>